Hey everybody, welcome back hey. to After the Sermon. We have this uh, weird guest here in the middle of us. My name's Justin. I'm Carrie. And I'm Daniel. And uh, we are really close together. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it shows up in your video, but here it's awkward. Okay, so pray for us. All right, so today we invited Daniel because we're going to talk about John chapter 12. We're in the middle of this series called Know the King. And we're talking, we're walking through the gospel according to John, and we're asking, who is Jesus? Who is King Jesus? And Carrie continued this series by looking at John 12. And the three of us were discussing this before we got on camera. And the question that we're going to tackle is this, and I want you to be thinking about it and answering this question as well, is which character in John 12 do you most resonate with? Mm -hmm. Do you connect with? I think this is a great way to study scripture is when I'm reading a story to be asking, which character in this story do I resonate mm -hmm. with? Which character is speaking to me as I'm reading the story? So just a Bible study tip. That's a great mm -hmm. way to study the stories of scripture. <laughs> so you preached on John 12. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us the characters? Okay. Give us Give us kind of a rundown of the characters that show up in John 12. Jesus, yes. Jesus, no. I mean, he's a character. He is a character. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Jesus. Okay. Uh, there is Mary, Martha, Lazarus, the disciples. Um, then we've got the crowd. Yep. We have the Pharisees. That's all I mentioned. Okay. There's more, but okay. that's all I mentioned. So okay. there's a long list mm -hmm. of characters. And one of the commentaries that you were studying... Mm -hmm pointed out that John often does this in his gospel account where he will have chapters with multiple characters to prompt the audience and the listener to ask, which one of these characters do I resonate with? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the gospel of Jesus, that Jesus, King Jesus, meets us right where we are mm -hmm. and we can see ourselves in one of these characters. Absolutely. And the way that the story ends, um, especially at the beginning of John 12, um, John leaves it hanging a little bit. Oh, he does and that all he the time. And that's why he does it, because he is forcing, yep, he's forcing yeah. the audience to be like, ooh, which one am I? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So I'm going to ask all three of us to answer that question. Okay. okay. Which one? So before we answer, will you just give us a, a, like a 30 second rundown of what's happening in John 12? Cool. What's, what's, what's the, what's the context? What's, yeah. what's the. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So we're after when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Okay. And then um, after that, they hold a, a dinner in his honor. And while he's there, um, Mary takes a about a pound of this super expensive perfume that cost a whole year um, to buy okay. and pours it out on Jesus's body. And then the disciples um, kind of balk at that. I'll, we'll get to that later. But then um, after that, Jesus comes into town in Jerusalem, and this is where we have a triumphal entry, um, Palm Sunday, where the crowd is waving palm branches mm -hmm. and declaring him king, and they are taking that very literally. They think he is going to come into town to take over. They're about to have a war. And instead, Jesus says that's not the case. That's not what's going to happen. I am going to be glorified, but I'm going to be glorified on a cross, not a throne, and I'm going to die. And the crowd doesn't get it. Mm. And they turn around and walk away. So, and, he, and he leaves town. And he leaves town. He's gone. The next time that that same crowd, because we're talking the same people, see Jesus, they are going to be shouting, crucify him rather than Hosanna. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So a meal. Disciples are at that meal. Mm -hmm. Mary, Martha, Lazarus. Lazarus is just raised from the dead, which has to be a crazy experience. Uh, disciples, Pharisees, the audience, the crowd, all of this is going on. Which one of those characters do you guys resonate with? Yeah. You know what I was thinking before we even, maybe to give people time to think as they're you know, commenting, how do you notice which one you resonate with? For me, I think sometimes it's the one that frustrates me. Oh. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. the or the one that caught, yeah, I'm like, oh, why Bubbles. did they do that? Yeah, mm -hmm. something. And so then I have to lean in and say, I wonder why mm -hmm. that character, I wonder why that. That is yeah. really good. Absolutely. The ones that I hear what they're saying, and I'm like, yeah, I agree with you. And then Jesus promptly is like, and this is why you're wrong. Um. <laughs> mm. Yep. So which one is it for you, Carrie? Yeah. Which one? 
So I didn't actually get to touch on this in my sermon, but this is what resonated with me while I was writing it. Um, after Mary pours out all the perfume on Jesus's body, um, the disciples, specifically Judas, say, why did she do that? That was such a waste. There are so many poor people around us that we could have used that money to help the poor. Now, Judas was asking for a different motive, but I resonated with that. Mm. Um, a lot of times I see churches do big things or build new buildings. And I have that little like, eh, in my heart, like there are starving people. Why are we doing this? Ooh, yeah. And it, it really did make me stop and think we can give lavish praise. We can give things to Jesus that cost us. Mm. Um, and that's okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. As wow. long as we're not doing it as a show for other people, yeah. you know. I would have never seen that in the story. Well, that's the beauty of this group. That's why I had you get in here awkwardly <laughs> in the middle <laughs> is because sometimes when it's just two people having these conversations, there's not as much resonation. Like there's not somebody says something and then somebody else in the group's like, oh man, me too. Or I wouldn't have thought of it that way. But when you put a group together, like three or more, yeah. Something really cool starts to happen. Mm -hmm. Somebody says something across the room, like, "Oh man, I wouldn't have been able to articulate that, but yes, yep. mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have thought of it. I wouldn't have seen it like that, but man, I'm so glad you brought that up." Mm -hmm. So doing this in groups is fantastic. Yeah, that's why we gear so much of our discipleship around group discipleship. Yes, mm -hmm. that's why two yes. two groups is so key here. Yes, because uh, I mean, we can do it one on one. I might come up with some cool things. Like we've yeah. all had a mentor, hopefully, mm -hmm. one on one. But there's something about listening to somebody else's version of the same story yes. <laughs> and yes. being like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And then that makes me think a different thing than I would have if, yeah. right. if it was just my mentor there. Yeah. You know? How about you? Which one? Which character? Yeah. When I heard, when I heard uh, Carrie teaching, I, I was almost, I was like, something riled up in me, this, this question of how, how much am I actually like the crowd? Mm -hmm. you know there's this idea i think that they were afraid to lose their power like on one hand they were like yes let's overthrow the romans and see if we can get more but then like a week later they were like well on second thought let's just keep it the way it is because stay pat yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Rome might like ruin our whole families yeah 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 mm -hmm. things are working out okay Let's just keep it that way. Yeah, yeah. that's that can mm -hmm. sometimes be my natural instinct. So I think that's why I resonate. And I felt sad a little, like, oh man, I I don't. I wish I was different. Yeah. You know, like I wish that I could have. You know, it's this is all conjecture, right? But like, I can't. I wasn't alive then. But I feel pretty certain I would have those questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty yeah. certain I would have the questions of like. Should I really bet the farm on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. when we have those Kairos moments, it's not, God doesn't want us to feel bad or feel shame, but there can be conviction mm -hmm. in those Kairos moments. And, and that conviction, then the, it's the kindness of God that is kind of squeezing our souls, squeezing our hearts to draw us closer to himself and draw us closer to what he has de designed us for. Mm -hmm. And so um, language, I think, is really important that we don't talk about God making us feel bad, but there is conviction from the Holy Spirit that is saying, what's going on right here? Mm -hmm. Like, why is it that I want things to stay the same? Why is it that I'm kind of afraid to lose my power or my influence or my, my position in a society or a system? Yeah. Like, what is that thing in me? And then let's dig under that and see what God wants how God wants to transform us mm -hmm. and, and, and continue to transform us into the likeness of Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I think it's the resentment piece. Um, and mm -hmm. I think that it's, you painted this beautiful picture of Mary coming in and her worship, her anointing of Jesus being um, almost a, a way of her walking out of her resentment. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know what it is about me, but I can become very, very resentful. Yeah. Um, I can be resentful of God, like not doing what I expect him to do, mm -hmm. um, not delivering in the way that I think he should deliver or not bringing the fruit that, that I think he should bring. Mm -hmm. And then I grow bitter and resentful. God, you could do so much more. You've promised you would do so much more. Why are, 
and then fill in the blank. And then I grow <laughs> resentful. And then I, and then I transfer that onto the people around me. I, oh, yeah. Well, mm-hmm, it must yeah. be their fault because I'm, I'm a blamer. Like, it must be his fault or her fault or his fault, mm. their fault, that it's, we're not experiencing the breakthrough or the bigness that God has in store for us. And for her to come in and just, I saw it as her laying down that, that disillusionment that Steve used. He, that was the language he used last week. You used resentment. Laying that resentment down before him, being honest with it, and then believing that the presence of Jesus is enough. Mm-hmm. It's enough fruit. Mm-hmm. It's enough. And I, I really struggle with that. Mm-hmm. I really struggle with that resentment. It festers and boils in me all the time. Um, and I love that you said the way that we break loose of that or are set free from that is worship. Yeah, that is, was, that was it's crazy just, good. Yeah, just like the... like. I just see it like this. I'm just going to worship mm-hmm. you and I'm going to make much of you. I'm going to believe that you are enough for me. Yeah. You know, and, um, you, you even said to bring that pain yeah. to the moment of worship. Absolutely. Like don't abandon it and be like, well, I'll deal with that resentment later as if it's like separating parts of my brain. Exactly. And mm-hmm. it's, it's not. Remember, yeah. like, I, I'm sure you remember this leading worship. We would say to people like, just leave your stuff outside the door yeah. and come in here right, and worship. Right. Yeah. You know, like, it's like, leave, leave what you were carrying around out there. And right. I, I hear in that, like, just bring it in here with you. Absolutely. Whatever you carried in here with you, you carry it with you. Mm-hmm. And let's just lay it down. Like, let's just set it before Jesus and be honest with it. And let him set us free from that resentment, that bitterness, our hurt, our suffering. Mm -hmm. Like he will meet us right in that place. And that's powerful. It is. And I'm not just saying that as a, you should do this. I'm not going to do it. Um, I have been there. I went through a period a few years ago where I was in a dark night of the soul. And worship is, singing is one of the biggest ways I worship. And I was, it was like a little toddler. I was like, I'm not going to sing to you. Uh uh-uh. uh, mm. like you don't deserve it because yeah. you didn't do what I said. I thought you were gonna do, and I refused for months. And then there was one day, and we sang a song, and I was like, you know what, forget it. And I collapsed on the floor at the church, sobbing, um, and singing. Holy cow! And it didn't make the issues go away, but I was freed from that resentment, mm. um, and I was able to suffer alongside God rather than against God. Mm-hmm. That's good. All right. This was good. That was cool. I mm-hmm. Leave your character in the comments. Maybe send us a text message. If you'd like to talk more about this chapter, we'd love to grab a coffee with you and continue this conversation. So great job on your sermon. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for joining <laughs> yes. us. Welcome. We'll see you next time. <laughs>